when you hear someone say emotions or that person's emotional or we're going to talk about emotions, why do we only think of the negative? Like, I'm pretty good at being happy. I'm pr pretty good at showing joy, right? It's just the negative emotions uh, that seemed to um, cause difficulty. And I think because the negative emotions are what require the vulnerability. And, you know, we're all products of our fathers one way or the other. And, you know, a lot of that's going to be in how we're raised. And typically, you know, our parents' generation, they didn't show a lot of emotions. It's because their parents' generation didn't show <laughs> a lot of emotions, uh, especially on, on, on the male side. And so if that's just the way that it is, it's certainly not the way that it always has to be. Um, so I think it takes a active, not a passive approach to um, being more in tune with the emotions and giving other people the audacity through your vulnerability to share theirs as well. Welcome to another episode of The Modern Man. This is a show where we start to tackle and discuss different obstacles and issues that men face in today's society. Joining me today, the usual suspect, Tyler Harris, Charles Russ in the building, and with us today, special guest, Darian Blue. Man, what's going on with you? What's up, man? Glad to be here, man. Yeah, glad to have you, man. And uh, we're going to jump right into the topic. Today's topic, we're going to tackle uh, talking about emotions and affection among men, especially in today's world with social media and everything really kind of being out in public. We know how, how difficult it could be for men to really feel their emotions and express their emotions. But before we get into the nitty gritty of today's topic, Darian, why don't you introduce yourself and let everybody know who you are? Yeah, man, Darian Blue uh, from Gainesville, Florida. I like to tell people I was Florida born, Florida <laughs> bred, but not die, be Florida dead. <laughs> but glad to be here, man. Greenville, South Carolina, Greenville being good to me, man. Um, pastor of uh, what I believe is to be one of the greatest churches, man, in the world, which is the Love Center of Nicoltown Baptist Church. Nice. And so, man, my father, husband, just a, uh, just lo a love of humanity. That's yeah. who I am. And, and definitely when you talk about father, husband, a member of the community, pastor, a lot of that has to do with with nurturing other people's emotions too right. through their emotions so first and foremost i think i'll start the question out is why do you think it's so hard for men to understand the emotions i think a lot of us are emotionally illiterate when it comes to growing up and not knowing how to express ourselves what do you think charles well, I, I guess they can put me on the spot um, well i guess i'm illiterate i never learned to read so especially, especially when it comes to emotions uh, well we're not taught we're not taught from day one uh, you know, we're, we're, a sports, we're a sports community, for instance, mm -hmm. and sports is based on toughness, being tough, not being emotional, making good decisions. And even the, you know, as, as, as we're trying to talk about emotions, it does have a negative aspect at times. Emotional decisions, we all know, can be some of the worst decisions you make. So there's a lot, I think those are things that come to the forefront when you first start teaching younger men about emotions, and then, so then that dulls the expression of emotion. You know, where, where we typically shake hands, ladies hug. Yeah. You know, um, and even if we do hug, it's a... That, that, <laughs> you know, Elbow. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, man, that's good. So uh, it's, just, it's not the society that we've been raised in. Um, men are also supposed to be a cornerstone. You're supposed to be a rock, a foundation. And that showing of vulnerability, as some people call it, may to others feel like showing weakness, which you don't want to show when you're expecting others, your family being others in that case, or your community to follow you mm -hmm. and to follow your, your lead, it's the negative connotation that weakness has had or vulnerability, if you want to call it, in our society. Yeah. I think mastering your emotions is a very, very difficult process, certainly. But I think it's funny when you hear someone say emotions or that person's emotional or we're going to talk about emotions, why do we only think of the negative? Like, I'm pretty good at being happy. I'm pr pretty good at showing joy, right? It's just the negative emotions uh, that seemed to um, cause difficulty. And I think because the negative emotions are what require the vulnerability. 
And, you know, we're all products of our fathers one way or the other. And, you know, a lot of that's going to be in how we're raised. And typically, you know, our parents' generation, they didn't show a lot of emotions. It's because their parents' generation didn't show <laughs> a lot of emotions, uh, especially on, on, on the male side. And so if that's just the way that it is, it's certainly not the way that it always has to be. Um, so I think it takes a active, not a passive approach to um, being more in tune with the emotions and giving other people the audacity through your vulnerability to share theirs as well. Uh, I don't have a son. I hope to one day. Um, I have certainly have a daughter and I'm extremely um, emotional with her and I would hope to be the same, you know, or, or no different, uh, you know, with my son and, and ultimately raise him in a way that, that he knows that, that you're supposed to just share with people what's on your heart and that there's nothing to be ashamed of. I think that's a lot of, I think that's a lot of, that maybe the root of where the, the sense of weakness comes from is that it's sometimes that it's somehow like sh there's some type of shame tied uh, to these negative emotions that we carry, uh, and that by exposing those, it's it's fearful. Um, you know, it's certainly not something that we're comfortable with. It's uncomfortable, and so you know, it's it's a important process that we figure out, and I think it's an important process that starts with us because if our parents' generation, if their parents' generation didn't you know, didn't instill that in us, then it takes us to instill it into our future generations for anything to change. And I agree with both of you guys. I mean, um, growing up, there was just being, being raised by a lot of men. There was an emotion I was shown, but it was more anger. <laughs> 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 yeah. you know? And so, you know, it, there, there was an emotion that was, uh, that was available in the space of, you know, where we live, but it was anger. And, you know, if you didn't do something right, you know, there was, there were consequences for that. And a lot of times it wasn't, you know, all right, well, well, maybe get it next time you'll get it right. <laughs> you know, or, or, but how you missed that basketball shot or how you, how you dropped that ball, you know, so it was always that type of emotion showed. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and, and I think a lot of times for, for men, I think we're misunderstood because I think that in order to be understood, you have to be able to talk about how you feel. Mm. And since we really don't talk about how we feel, there, there's this, this gap that leaves us to be mistaken by people who love us. Like my dad, my granddad, um, I didn't understand them. I loved them, I knew they loved me, but I didn't understand them as an individual because they never talked. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't really, um, get into the heart you understand what i'm saying yeah and so since we, were, we never talked about life um as it relates to how we feel um i never understood them yeah and i'm sure with my sons even now i have three sons mm -hmm. one's 19 uh one's 14 and one's 13. i'm pretty sure at times it's hard for them to understand me because i can come in the house and be silent Mm -hmm. and not say a word. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's very important. This is a very great topic about emotions. But why would you, why would you come in the house and be silent? Like what would dictate that, that that's what you wanted to do? Um, because sometimes I don't know what else to do. Mm. I don't know. I, I, I don't, at times I don't know how to um, walk in the house and express to my sons or my daughters um, how hard of a day I've had or my frustrations or what I'm feeling or, you know, or, or even there, there are times, if I can be totally transparent, there are times where uh, what they want to talk to me about their day. And sometimes I don't know how to turn off, you know, um, how difficult my day has been and then turn on the emotional part of me mm -hmm. to hear what they have to say. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's work, there's work to be done. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I shared it with you because T.D. Jakes has a great video about it and a great example. It's like uh, when you're a little boy, you're taught what does a little, bit do little boy do when he gets in trouble? He runs in his room with his toys. Yeah. So as men, that's kind of like the way we develop emotionally. Mm -hmm. it's, you repress, you run, in, you run in your room with all your toys and you don't share. But then we never, we don't mature in the same way that women do emotionally because we just don't. Because our, our answer is to you revert to what you know. You run back in your room or you run back in, and I think he actually refers to it as a cave, 
he hides in his cave with his toys. He goes back in his man cave mm -hmm. alone and doesn't doesn't speak on it. So there's definitely some some truth to it, and it does. I think it comes from day one being taught that that's the way that this is how we deal with things. Yeah. And what I liked about all your answers and kind of bringing it all together, where I loved how Tyler, you were mentioning how emotion in itself doesn't have to be negative. Sure. And, and Darren, you're mentioning being understood or understanding somebody. I think as men, a lot of times our emotional palette is kind of summed up in two. I'm, I'm either happy or I'm mad and there's nothing in between, but there is a plethora of emotions, different emotions, and we might be feeling them for a certain, for a certain reason. And I think at the end of the day, for a man, you know, being disappointed, being upset about not reaching a certain goal or something, all falls into the category of mad. So somebody might be mad, but you don't understand why. And they can't express the emotion in terms of, this is more disappointment, not anger. Do you think that growing up in the world where it's like, hey, you know, big boys don't cry, or maybe we've been in an environment, I'm sure each, of, each one of us has been in an environment growing up where we started to show emotion and the immediate surroundings shut us down. And because of that, we've learned that, okay, from now on the way I show this emotion is gonna be more aggressive. I'm gonna show this emotion in an aggressive way. And do you think that's why we kind of just sum it up in just to two categories and don't have more categories to understand? I, I think it's interesting that any repressed negative emotion more than likely is going to turn to anger at some point. Mm -hmm. And so what was initially felt as disappointment or felt as inadequacy or felt as um, sadness when repressed over time and, and forced to be kept inside is ultimately going to come out as anger. Um, and I think that's, that speaks to the importance of being able to share these things as you're feeling them, as you're going through them. Uh, but I don't know what that looks like. Like in your example, I don't, I, I don't know, I don't know the right way to show my son or daughter how to go through those emotions. You know, mm -hmm. if, if I was you know, upset, if I was disappointed with something that happened at work, you know, how to properly ex be able to express those emotions and in, in, in a way that they could understand. And I don't know what the, what the answer in that is, but I know that bottling it in and sweeping it under the rug and that's not the right answer so if we know that the right answer is to show it and to express it then it's you know how do we do that uh, how do we do that in a way that's not just um you know dad came home and, and dad's in one of his moods or dad's you know going through some stuff but does it in a way that's also you know somewhat almost educational mm -hmm. like like hey here's here's what happened today i'm, I'm, I'm upset about it um, but you know what, that's okay. Like, I'm going to get over that. Um, you know, what, tell me about your day, you know, kind of like switching it back to be able to express it in some way, but then to be able to flip it and, and show them that like, Hey, today was disappointing. Today was frustrating, but today's not over, <laughs> you know? And the fact that I, that I just saw you when I walked in the door just instantly changed my mood and my emotions just by seeing your face. And let's talk, let, let me hear about you, your day. And, yeah, I don't, I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how that plays out, but I know that it's an important, uh, it's gotta be an important process to making sure that we're not bottling this stuff up and letting it turn into anger. The way I express myself comes off angry, a lot. When I'm disappointed, I'm angry. When I'm sad, I'm angry. When I'm angry, I'm angry, you know? <laughs> uh, but that's the way it always comes off. Sure. Because like you said, it's either, it's either no or go. I only know one way to express it. Uh, and I think some of that may come from being a very, I think we're all kind of motivated in our own way to do our thing, mm -hmm. being results driven people. Disappointment doesn't get in, has never gotten me a result. Hey, I'm disappointed. You know, it, it's never gotten me the result that I was seeking. You know, and maybe that's my fault for taking it, for holding on to earlier examples in life of where that being disappointed with the way I was treated or the way someone else performed does nothing for me. Hmm. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that that changes now. Uh, I'm hoping that I'm improving on my relationship with my kids. So, you know, even if they're playing sports, if I tell them 
I'm disappointed. I'm not disappointed because you lost. I'm disappointed because you could have done better. You didn't prepare the way you should have. You didn't do what I know you know how to do. You know, so I'm not disappointed in you as a person. I'm just disappointed because you didn't do what I know you can do. Or, or I'm disappointed because you didn't do what we had talked about you doing. That, you know, be it at school, be it cleaning up your room, whatever. Uh, but I think it's the lack of, it's like you said, that, that early, at early age, the lack of results. What is being disappointed? Hey man, I'm really disappointed about you not coming to my birthday party. Is that gonna make that person come to your next birthday party? Is that gonna make them show up? Hey man, I'm really, I'm really sad that, that you know, I'm not, we're not friends or we're not doing things that I would like to see. Even in a conversation with, with, with uh, someone you're in a relationship with, a female that you're in a relationship, when you tell me you're disappointed, what do you get back? Get that look, that, well, that or, or they go into defense mode with you. So it's like, okay, what, what? Therefore, what is the utility? Because I, we, you know, I get rid of all things of no value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is the utility in being disappointed? Well, that's the question. It sounds like you're kind of results driven, right? With the emotions. And I know, kind of. I'm results driven. Period. Yeah. <laughs> that's, all, that's, all, that's all I got. So for. if that's the case, if what you're saying, if result, if emotions don't really have any results. Why do we as humans continue to feel them so strongly? If they didn't serve any purpose to us, we would have done away with that in, through evolution. But, but we that's, still feel emotion. That's kind of the point is that we kind of have. Mm. That's, I think that's what we're saying is that we've slowly done away with all of that the stuff. The expression of it. Yeah, the, especially the expression because I don't think you control what goes on in your gut. You mm -hmm. can't control that. But the expression of it, like we're talking about with our parents and our grandparents, literally what Darren was saying, we did do away with it. Mm -hmm. Because what's the utility? What's the, what's the point of me being downtrodden when I just need to, I need to get it done? Because yeah. the, the entrepreneurial mindset that we've all, all got, see, I must be right because Tyler's giving me the head nod. <laughs> he, he, when yeah. you get this, oh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, when you get this, <laughs> you know what's you're up. on to something. But in, in all seriousness, like, what is the utility? And I'm, as much as I'm playing devil's advocate, I'm begging the question, like, on the other side of being an entrepreneur, well, I'm disappointed in that. So, let's go. Let's get it done. Mm -hmm. And those are the people that we've become. Mm -hmm. So are we saying that we shouldn't have ever became those people? Well, I'd like to throw out that idea then in terms of maybe the emotions are something to be learned from. I think we feel emotion to understand what our motivation should be the next time. So if you're disappointed in a grade you got on a test, maybe your motivation becomes study harder so you reach your goal next time. Do you think the emotions that we feel give us feedback in real time to the world around us so we can increase the lives that we're living? I, I certainly do. I, but to Charles' point, I think we as men take opportunities to, to use emotions as fuel. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like what you're saying is disappointment doesn't have a high enough octane to really get anything going. That's like, it's like you have to turn it into anger to then allow that to fuel and motivate you to do better next time. But maybe disappointment doesn't motivate you. And that may just be you. Mm -hmm. It makes sense to me. Uh, I, but I can think back to times, you know, you get to that certain age where all of a sudden, you know, your dad goes from angry to that one time where he says, I'm really disappointed in you. And it just cuts you at your absolute core, you know? Mm. Uh, I don't know what age that was for me, but I remember one time he was like, if you weren't gonna do it, just, you should have just told me you, you weren't gonna do it. I'm extremely disappointed. And I was like, I just want a spanking. Like, I just want to get yeah. beat. Like, yeah. like, like, like <laughs> I don't want you to be disappointed. <laughs> yeah, true, but, true. Um, so, you know, in that moment, that disappointment fueled me, mm -hmm. you know, not to ever do whatever it was that I did again or didn't do to do. Um, so I, you know, I think maybe each person's different as far as what emotions are enough fuel for them to, to be able to use that, uh, for something good. Yeah. And for you, you know, it may be that, that, that disappointment side or, or the frustrated side, it, it needs to get to a high enough level to where it can really start amping things up. Well, and Darren, I got to get your, get your thought on it, but I want to make kind of a deline uh, a separation here. Sure. There's emotions about myself, mm -hmm. but there's emotions about other people. Mm -hmm. So really when I talk, when I was talking about this, oh, being disappointed in myself, mm -hmm. that does, it, I guess it, manif it may manifest as anger, but disappointing myself will get me, it's rocket fuel. 
Okay. I will never disappoint myself again. Okay. See, it's already, I'm already getting amped up because that's just, <laughs> that's just my, that's my style. But like I said, but if you think back to what I was saying, like, well, you didn't come to my birthday party or, or you didn't even remember my birthday, so now I'm disappointed. That, that's a disappointment with someone else. Mm -hmm. It's nothing I did, or that goes into all kind of psychological. What did was that my fault? They didn't remember it. You know that. I, mean, I don't think we're going there. Um, but it's that disappointment with someone else yeah. starts to be like this is a waste of time. Why be disappointed? Eh, whatever. If I'm disappointed in myself, you know, and that's I get. I think we're kind of moving towards that conversation. So should I say, Ted, man, you know, I'm, I'm real disappointed in myself. I said I'm doing like right now. I'm doing a 40 day fast, church fast. Today is day 21. Good, but it, so if I have a drink, you know, it's on the fast. No drinking. If I have a drink, I would 100% disappoint myself, mm -hmm. you know? So should I go to Ted and be like, man, I'm really disappointed in myself? Or should I just knuckle up and take care of it? Like, what's, what's the correct modern man? Is there a correct modern man? I think you said something very key right there. You said that if you were disappointed in yourself, should you go uh, to Ted or should you knuckle up, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the whole, I think that's the value of emotion sometimes, that emotions have a tendency to connect us all together, right? Um, if you if you take um, an offended women are watching, I, I hope this is this is <laughs> offensive. But when you you see women together, I mean, they go to the bathroom together and they come out and they're just you know they happy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> and if one if if this is a group of women and one was here crying, then all of them would probably need tissue because mm -hmm. it's that emotional piece. Yeah, you know that kind of that kind of breeds sisterhood for them. Um, but for us, as, and you know, want to come over there and they'll console each other and you know, they, it's the emotions that bring the bond. But with men, if Ted was crying, I'd just like, it'll be alright Ted, you know. <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> you good? <laughs> you know, and in my head I'm thinking like, man, what you crying for? <laughs> you know I mean? And so I, I, I think it, there's, there's a bond that can be built with emotions, but as men, we just don't know in full, I have not yet mastered that uh, that brotherhood as it relates to those types of emotions mm, sure. that can bring us together. You know, we play football or basketball or something, or even in a you know you know at Catalyst lifting weights. You know, mm -hmm. there, I think there's a, a an emotional bond there. You know, yeah. I see. Uh, Charles and you know I get emotional when I say it because my back arms don't look like his. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my back arm like Charles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the that's kind of the question though. Yeah. Um, are, are we supposed to do that? Well, that's as, that's what as the role in society. Are we supposed to do that? Supposed yeah. To are we supposed to, to bring us together? Do I need do I need to be emotional? Am I, I'm a leader, mm -hmm. so constant expression of and weakness is a horrible word. Words have connotations. Weakness just has a horrible connotation. So we've kind of moved on to saying vulnerability, but they're kind of almost the same word. Mm -hmm. They are the same. I mean, they have the, almost the same definition. You know, um, is the constant show of vulnerability, vulnerability make you less of, because if you're looking, even if you look in nature, who's the leader of the pack? It's the strongest, most ferocious, toughest one out there. Mm -hmm. That's, and we are at the end of the day, at the core of us, we're animals. And do we lose that ability? I'm just looking for a reason why emotion is so repressed, number one. But we do bond through emotions, but I don't think it's those same emotions that women bond through. I, bo I bond with people that I go through things with. That's why sports bond us. If we win a championship at the last second, we beat this team that was so great, and it's us four and one team, we have a bond. Like we're gonna have that third, <laughs> yeah. third year reunion. Beers, high fives. Now somebody may cry at every union too, because maybe we are five in my team and the fifth guy passed away. Are you telling me we ain't gonna cry a little bit? Oh, we are. We are, because our center's gone, because ain't none of us that tall, man, I don't know. <laughs> so uh, our center passed away. That, that's gonna be the most emotional, and it is an emotional bond. Mm. But as far as just the constant expression of it, you know, I, I by no means am good at this. I'm probably the worst here. I'd be willing to guarantee I am. My girlfriend will 100, hey babe, will 100% <laughs> tell you I'm the worst, yeah. you know? Well, I like, I like where this conversation is going. That's the perfect segue into the, the second portion of emotions, because you mentioned how emotions can bond us, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, like there's a study done, when you talk to married men, more so than not, when they're depressed or having hard times, their go-to is their wives. You talk to women, only about 30% say their husband. 
-hmm. Women have a network of friends to support them through emotional distress where men are lacking that. Now, not saying that one relates to the other, but if you look at the suicide rate amongst men, it's a lot higher because are they lacking that emotional support? A lot of the bonds I feel with you guys and other friends of mine is we sweat together, we went through pain together, we went through hard times together. And that's one bond. I don't think I have any strong bond with someone through, through hardship, through depression, through uh, crying or anything like that, that would bond me with another man. And is that an issue that we're having? I, I think to your first point on the marriage piece, I agree 100% that there's a strong correlation there. Um, that your wife's job should not be to be your wife and your emotional backboard for everything that you're going through, that you need a, um, another male in your life that you can have these conversations with um, and that you can be vulnerable with. And I'll challenge you on your definition of vulnerability. If we're looking at the definition of vulnerability as like, here's a piece of armor and there's a vulnerability right here. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would say that that is the same as weakness, but I would view vulnerability in this way as strength, ultimate strength, in the being able to show emotion. Because if you had somebody come up on stage that was vulnerable, you would say that person's being courageous. But we all look at vulnerability and we say, oh, that person, it, it's a sign of weakness. Hmm. It's the ultimate form of strength. And, and to me, the ability to use your emotions, if we are on a team and we have a coach come out here and this coach were to try to, you know, rally us to go into the to the the second half when we're down you know down in the score if he were to come out here and use emotions and get emotional like those are the things that are going to pull like our insides out those are the p things that are going to like absolutely get us get us going and 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 to me drive me way more than a coach that just comes running out here all angry and you know says ah go get him like one that like really pulls on my heartstrings um and to me i'm going to look at that person as insanely strong uh, for, for showing emotions. Um, but I think it is a problem in that, you know, we're sitting here talking about it and we don't, we don't have any idea how to do it. And so it's all about this idea of creating space. And I think, you know, we've, we've all hopefully got somebody that we can have these type of conversations with. And I think it's, it's vital. Uh, and it doesn't need to be our spouses. It doesn't need to be our significant others. Um, relationships are hard enough without that person having to also be your you know, your, your emotional support. Um, it's not fair to them, uh, quite frankly. Um, and they do typically have more of a support system, females. Um, that's just because it's always been that way, you know? But back to what we first started in the very beginning, like just because things have always been this way, just because we've always been super tough guys, doesn't mean that we can't somehow figure it out. Um, and so creating that space for people uh, I think the only way to do it is by first showing your emotions. Like the only way I'm going to get Ted to be a, to to open up is by me being vulnerable and opening up to him. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Same with you. Like it's that's the most important conversations, most important relationships that we have um, is that outlet. Because again, without that, we're going to repress that stuff, and it's going to turn into anger, and bad things happen. There's this analogy, uh, my business partner um, was telling me the story. He said he was uh, talking about this situation where he just blew up on this guy and he just was yelling at him and everybody was kind of like laughing at the scenario because it was kind of funny how he blew up on him. And there was this one super, super wealthy guy in the corner and he wasn't laughing. And my business partner, Joseph, said, you know, why aren't you laughing? Like, it's funny. It's funny what I said to that guy when I blew up. He's like, it's not funny. And he said he took this glass and the glass was full of water and he said he started shaking the glass like this. Water started like getting out a little bit on the table and he started shaking a little more and started flying everywhere. And he said, why did water come out of that glass? He's like, obviously, because you shook it. He's like, no, wrong. Water came out of that glass because water was in it. Mm -hmm. You blew up on that guy and you were angry with that guy because you had anger inside of you. And so it's this reality that as we bottle these emotions up and they do turn into anger, that it's going to come out eventually on somebody, a girlfriend, a girlfriend, a wife, a kid. Um, and the, the more that we can do to make that happen less, <laughs> to make those outbursts, to make those situations happen less, the, the better. 
And the only way I know to do that is by dealing with those emotions when they come. Uh, but again, it's, it's finding somebody that you can do it with that's not your spouse. I think it's super important. Yeah, and, and who can we go to? I mean, because society makes us feel like, you know, if we show too much emotion, then, you know, we're a little too soft. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, um, and it's hard to, to go to, um, I mean, I, I speak personally, it's hard for me to go to anybody I grew up with and be like, hey, man, I, I, I want to talk about something. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, man, what you, man, what you talk about? You know, like, they're going to tell me, man up. You know, pretty, mm -hmm. just man up, you know, and, and that's pretty much the end of the conversation. Yeah. It's kind of the definition, man it's up. Kind of like, that kind of, that kind of, <laughs> that's, the problem, that's the problem right there. Don't talk about it, just fix it, kind of like what Charles is saying. Like, don't talk about it, just fix it. But I, but, but I agree with you that there has to be somebody for us to talk to because I know personally what it feels like to have these emotions bottled up. And, this, and I can feel it. I mean, this is there, you know, and and it doesn't just go away because I go to sleep. You know, it doesn't just go away because I pick up a, a glass of scotch. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still there. And um, and then it does come out a short burst of anger. I mean, it's not, it doesn't mm -hmm. all just come out at one time. It's kind of like you said, that glass, you know, a little come out here, <laughs> a little come out there, mm -hmm. you know, but, but some, it, it does come out. And usually it comes out towards the people who don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. So usually if I have a short burst of anger, you know, my son can, can, can do something I don't agree with. But since I never got, you know, healed emotionally from something that happened five years ago mm -hmm. and that water is in here, now I'm yelling at him, you know, and going in on him for about three or four minutes. That's all. But I've broken him in them three or four minutes because... I didn't get healed over here. Didn't have anybody to talk to about it here. Mm -hmm. And that water came out to somebody who doesn't need me to talk to them like that, but they need me to embrace them and love them. Mm -hmm. And I gave them, I gave them anger and I didn't give them love. Which then further breeds into the misunderstanding. Breeds into the misunderstanding. Well, he said the key words, uh, someone who needs them to embrace and love. Because one thing I will say that, well, as far as me projecting, there's two sides, there's projecting and receiving really bad at projecting like i'm not gonna tell you how i feel i'm just not because i don't want to <laughs> you just, if you just want me to be blunt i don't want to but i'll listen to you and i won't make you feel any lesser for telling me anything mm -hmm. i will ask you you know and i and, and you have to get to know who you're talking to um a big problem with men and women is women talking i want to give you a solution well this is this this and this this is this like my girlfriend will be telling me what's going on with business work i'm like well we need to do this so when we do this sales spreadsheet run these numbers and then she's like shut up <laughs> i just want to talk i just want to say what i want to say to you i want to tell you what's going on and i just want you to take it in so you know not being so i've learned there you know don't be a problem solver just just be a sponge soak it up and you know if they want your opinion they'll ask you well what do you think about that what do you think about this but creating a, creating a becoming a person that someone knows they can talk to mm -hmm. like literally becoming a person that they know when they call you um, I've got several young young guys that I talk to that'll reach out to me about stuff and I'm not gonna give them I'm not I'm not a very soft person now I'm not gonna tell you if you're doing something wrong <laughs> it's your fault I will let you know mm -hmm. and that's now the other side of this I've seen people take this thing too far and and just be like oh no everything's okay no it's not okay People need to know when something's wrong or when they're not putting in enough effort or when they're, make, when they're making emotional decisions which aren't going to be good for their long-term well-being. They need to be, you know, somebody needs to be able to tell you, well, look, I understand what you're saying. I understand why you did it, but that was a very emotional decision. Here's what you should have, here's all the things you should have thought about before that. But I've made, I've created that space for them. I'm working on creating it for myself. I'm, I'm get there, maybe. <laughs> but creating that space where someone is willing and that actually will, uh, you know, like you said, once it happens, then I'm on the other side of that coin you talk about, well, I've been emotional Ted. So these guys have talked to me mm -hmm. about things because I, they could just tell. I'm, I'm real comfortable talking to him. He just doesn't, you know, he, he lets me know I can talk to him about anything. So now you start to get that back and forth where, you know, because the best thing you can do with someone a lot of times is give them an example from your own life. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they feel way more comfortable. Well, I'm in the situation with a girlfriend. Well, 
I had a girlfriend X number, you know, years ago and it's the same thing. Here's what I felt, here's what I dealt with. So then you're establishing that connection. So I think one thing we can all work on is being a receptor. Mm -hmm. and, and by doing that for someone else, by letting people know in conversation and what you're doing that they can talk to you, that will start to open you up to talk to them and yeah. to talk to other people. But I don't think that we as men, like, like you said, your friends will say man up. Yeah. Don't say man up. Like mm -hmm. we need to teach ourselves to that when another man comes to you with something to, oh yeah man, let's, let's sit down and talk about it. Well, what, what's going on, you know? Um, like if me and Ted were talking about something emotional, funny part is we'd probably be sitting exactly where we're sitting now instead of me sitting next to, instead of me sitting next to him on the couch i'd be like so what's up ted you know just talk from over there buddy and you know um yeah but it, slide the tissue across yeah. the table but it's a start yeah. it's a start so it's creating yeah. comfort for, i think creating comfort for other people will eventually lead us to be able to talk more because we're listening to them we're hearing this over and over and we're saying okay well th they're doing it now i can be comfortable doing it. Mm -hmm. so, so what you're saying, becoming a safe place yeah. for other men. Yeah. How do, how do we individually become a safe place for other men? Yeah, I think that's what we have to start to do. And there's not a manual, there's not a book on it, but by us, just, you know, it's your presence. Mm -hmm. You know, it's when you have conversations, are you reaching out to, to people and helping them with their problems? Even when they may not be looking for it, but you hear them and they're kind of discussing the problem. And well, you know, if, if you want some help, let me know. Uh, I can talk yeah. to you about it. I think it's also situational awareness, kind of mm -hmm. even being like, hey man, you all right? You know, if you see one of your friends struggling, I like severing up that solution out there is in terms of just being a receptor, allowing other men to be emotional with you, letting them know it's okay, because habits die hard, right? And we're really talking about, as we've all discussed, almost changing an environment that men have lived in for decades yeah. and generations, and to kind of change that and just be like, hey, it's okay to talk to me, whether it's from across the table or sitting right next to each other. Once someone starts to feel validated, like, oh, I can pour out into this person, that is the, the stepping stone to really kind of pay it forward. Because really what we're talking about isn't ourselves. We can't change the environment that we grew up in because that's already yeah. happened. When we talk about the modern man, it's how can we set an environment for the next generation, yeah. for the, the men that come after us to grow up and, and be successful in receiving emotion. I do want to touch on really quick the affection part because we all have significant others and a lot of times, I know for me personally, I had to struggle with the lack of affection I showed to my girlfriend. I had to learn how to show more love, learn how to make her feel loved. Do you think that's something else tied to emotion that men deal with in, in relationships sometimes? It's, you know, like, high five, babe, you know, I, I love you. Instead of kind of like being in public, arm around each other and being all lovey-dovey? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I'm, 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 you, you probably have seen it. My boys will be 16 next month. When they first cut, when, you know, they, they go to church with me and we have a five to 10 minute moment where we go around, you walk around, you talk to everybody and they hug you. It was very awkward to them at first. Mm -hmm. They were like, they're worried about hugging me. Right? <laughs> but, but they've gotten used to it. Mm. And now they talk to people and they're, hey, hey, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? And so that, that's helping. But it is, we weren't raised like that. At a certain point, I don't know what age is, you stop kissing your dad. You know, I don't want my kids kiss me. So if y'all watch, no, don't, don't do that. But <laughs> at a certain point, you know, like we sure. go from, from the little kiss on the forehead, kiss on the cheek, and it almost becomes, a, it's that, then that manhood kicks in. It, it almost feels degrading. Like if you get kissed on the forehead, like, man, don't. Don't do that. You know, the, the pat on the head, which was so cool when you were five, when I start rubbing you on the head and you're 15, that don't, don't get your head off the top of my head, man. Like, why are you doing that to me? That's, it's the chain, it's like the man change and maybe some of it's testosterone and hormones. Sure. But I will say that there is a, there's a definite, you know, I see it and I get to see it because I'm watching them. Luckily, you know, we have some, some time still. They're, they're not all the way grown, but you know, they're, I am working. You know, I do see things that they do better than, than I did when I was their age. You know, they, they're not afraid to say, love you pops and, and roll out, give me, give me a hug. Uh, I think me and my dad only high five for about 12 years straight. Just, <laughs> hey, you know, so, that's all we had. So uh, it, is, it is something to watch and look for, man. And, and it's very weird how, how you'll have the exact same relationship with a boy and a girl until they're about three, four years old. 
and then it starts to taper off and become very different. I think a lot of it has to do with the modeling that you had in your household growing up, um, you know, how affectionate your parents were. Um, it's definitely going to play a role. And then we've got our love languages, right? So, you know, some people just physical touch isn't their thing. And that's fine. Most, most men, you know, that are uh, on the physical touch side, but, but some aren't. Um, and I think it's a super important process to go through to figure out what your partner or what your spouse's love language is because there's nothing more frustrating than you thinking that you're feeding them and that you're you know loving them and that you're supporting them and showing them your love but they're not receiving it at all <laughs> and that's that's worse than not doing it at all um, and so understanding like what what does make my wife feel loved is it acts of service is it words of affirmation is it quality time or is it you know physical touch uh, those that's extremely important to make sure that you're that you guys are speaking the same language and most couples I don't think are usually the same you're usually mm -hmm. gonna be different and so to make sure that they're they're consciously um, feeding one another in the way that they like to be fed um, is, is super important and there's nothing there's nothing wrong with being strategic I think a lot of people like when I go through this process of coaching our, our agents we talk about this a lot with with relationships and you know wh whether it's doing certain things or date nights or putting stuff in their calendars as reminders to like, hey, once you, once you put a reminder in your calendar that says to send your wife a text every day, like put three reminders in there, put five reminders in there. And sometimes you get this pushback. Well, I mean, if she knows these reminders are in there, like, isn't she going to be like, oh, well, it means less? No, she's going to get the text from you and she's going to be happy. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the idea that you put these accountability, um, you know, structures in place to make sure you're you're expressing these emotions the right way and being affectionate in the right way, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just we're men. Like we, we require extra assistance <laughs> to, to, to be able to handle this whole love thing. Uh, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, for a while, one of mine was FaceTiming my wife uh, on the phone because uh, I traveled so much and we would talk on the phone, but it's something different about seeing their face. And I would put three alerts in my um, calendar for every single day. And it would almost every time be the third one that I'd, that I'd do it, but I'd still do it. Uh, and it, and it meant a lot to her and it meant a lot to me to be able to spend that, that time together. Um, so I think, you know, the key to the, the showing affection is making sure that, that you guys are on the same page as far as like what affection they, they want to, they want to receive. Um, because, you know, if you're going to go through that pro that effort of being affectionate, you want to make sure at the very least that they're getting something from it. Like it's not for, you're not being affectionate for you being affectionate for them uh, so you want to make sure that they're being filled up by it um, you know that's a great question man I think that is that is like a um, if we can get that piece down I think as men we'll be a whole lot better mm -hmm. you know seriously that whole affection piece um, you know for me I I was raised by uh, my father my grandfather my uncles my grandmother until she died but not my mother so I was raised in a situation with my mom. She was on drugs my entire life, still is, but she's still the best woman I know. Hmm. And so I, 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 don't, I don't know what it feels like, you know, to lay your head in, in your mama's lap, or I don't know what it feels like to, um, you know, to have your mom as your biggest cheerleader. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And to have that, that huge display of affection, you know, um, like I saw with the rest of my friends. You know, the rest of my friends, their dads weren't showing up, but their moms were, you know, and so they got all these hugs and, and all these kisses, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and all this stuff, you know, and yeah. I, I didn't get it. I missed all of that. And I longed for it and I never got it. And so what I did get was just the, the, what we were talking about earlier, just the, the different type of emotion, the anger piece or the instruction piece, right? So I got the, either, either, either instruction or it's anger instruction or anger and that was it but it was never you know hey baby how you doing man? How are you? you're hungry but you're ready to eat baby it was like food on the table come on eat you know what I mean? you eat you know and then you go back do what you was doing you know mm -hmm. and so um and so because of that for me personally when i got married you know I struggled so much and my wife i, I you know and I, I take full responsibility for it. we were separated for years and a lot of it had to do with 
uh, because of my inability to show emotions or affection uh, to her in a way that she needed it, right? And so I thought that because I was paying the bills and because, you know, um, the, the lights never got cut off and, you know, you know, you want that sofa, go get the sofa, you know what I mean? And, and so I'm thinking that I'm doing everything a man is supposed to do, but there's another element that was missing. And the other element was she wanted me to tell her that I love her. And she wanted me to, um, to for her to, to, to come next to me and she'll lay up under my arm and I, mm -hmm. and I hold her, you know. Uh, she wanted me to um, not just take her to the nail salon and get her feet done, but she wanted me to rub her feet sometimes. Mm -hmm. I ain't not how to do that. <laughs> so, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, to, to me, it, and it's not that I didn't want to. Yeah. And even to this day, I still feel uncomfortable. If she puts her foot on mine, <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> You know what I mean? Like I gotta point because I'm, I'm I'm just so tempted just to do like you know the yeah, it's cool like together because I'm just not I just never had that I never mm -hmm. had that show of affection um, and it also translated like that with my children as well you know like I'm just getting to the point now to where I can kiss my boys on the forehead mm -hmm. you know and I got a 19 year old son who's six foot seven imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a six foot seven college basketball player, you know, and now for the past two years, I've been able to kiss him on his forehead. And he That's like, awful. you know, I had to kiss him when he's sitting down. So he like, like, Man, don't, like you said, like, don't, don't do that. You know, and so when he around his teammates, I go to Daytona and he around his teammates, you know, you know, he tried to keep his distance because, you know, I grab him and kick because it feels good now, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, uh, but my younger boys, here's what I'm learning to do with them is all the mistakes I made with my 19-year-old son, and I can't take any of them back. I wish I could. Only thing I can do now is do better and have a better relationship with him. I wish to God I can take some of those days and years and seconds and moments back. I can't. But what I can do is with my sons now, I can learn from those mistakes and become more affectionate with my babies now. And so what I do now is every single day, they hear me tell them I love them. And they hear me um, tell them how proud I am of them, and I kiss them, you know, on their forehead, and and we still do the, you know, the dab, you know, mm -hmm. and we got our own little handshakes and all kind of stuff like that. So I mean, it, it means a lot to them, but I'm still a work in progress. And I think that if we can get that affection piece down and and understand that to be affectionate doesn't mean that we're soft, but I think being affectionate. Being affectionate is helping us to be understood. Mm. Have you ever had this conversation uh, with them or with your wife? The idea, the the conversation around the way you grew up and the things that you didn't have emotionally, the things that that you did have. Have you ever had that conversation with them? I had, I've had it with my wife. Yeah. Yeah. But you know. Yeah. To her, that's that's not an excuse. You know, like mm -hmm. it's just, you know. I think you made a good point, and I'm gonna just kind of translate it just a little bit. I think that when we love people, I think we have to love them the way they need to be loved, and not the way we want to love them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I was doing. I was I, I used to give what I thought they needed, and what I think they need may not be what they need. Mm -hmm. And so I had to go back to the drawing board and love them the way they need to be loved. Mm -hmm. And sometimes loving them the way they need to be loved is a huge sacrifice because it's a giving of I have to, I have to strip so much of myself away mm -hmm. to give them what they need because what they need requires something that I'm just not used to giving. Yeah. And so I got there's a lot of stripping away and a lot of just you know denying myself to uh, to be all I can be for them. But I've had it with my wife, but I haven't had it with my, mm -hmm. with my I just, It just seems like with your wife. Certainly, but with the kids as well, it just seems like it, it's such a powerful thing for them to understand. Like this is what life was like when I was your age. This is this is what I not dealt with, but this is the way I received love, or didn't receive love, or didn't feel love. And it almost makes it to where those seemingly insignificant expressions of love from you, seemingly from you, all of a sudden become significant to them because they know that it's not natural that they know that it's not 
just something that you've been doing always because it was done for you. Like when, when they know that my dad's doing something right now because he's expressing this to me because he loves me that much, not because it's just what his dad did for him and his dad did for him. It, to me, it makes it, it, make it, it makes it even that much more special. Um, and with your wife as well, for her to know that, you know, I'm gonna lay up on you, I'm gonna rub your feet, like that, that this is so not me, but I'm doing it anyways which is like the ultimate expression uh, of love. I think there's a lot of, a lot of power, power in that, but the conversation that you're already having, like the stuff that you just said that you're doing with your kids is already uh, incredible. And, and I think maybe not a conversation with them, but maybe one with your oldest, um, because I could sense in you that there's some regret there. Uh, but for your oldest to really understand that your intent was right. You just didn't know how to show it and that now I understand more and I want to make up for lost time. You know, it's, it's powerful. It's really powerful. So to serve up the solution and really wrap it up here, I think ultimately when we've been talking about emotions and affections, it comes down to understanding. Understanding who we are, having others understand who we are, and, and better teaching our, our, our sons, our daughters, how to, to go through their emotions look through their emotions, understand it, and project themselves better. It's all about projection. So if you're watching this and you're, you're sitting at home, you're wondering, okay, I have these emotions, I don't know what they are. Expand your palette other than just being happy or sad or mad or angry because there, I'm sure we all know there are a few things as frustrating as being misunderstood. Mm -hmm. And when you're misunderstood, it makes you angry. And the misunderstanding comes from you not understanding your own emotions. So search your emotions, understand them, and also make an environment for others to share their emotions with you. And we can start changing the environment that men grow up in to have a safe place to share their emotions and better be understood by their spouses, by their children, and by their friends. So go out there, guys, and be a modern man.